Good morning and welcome to Utoy Daily News. In top news today, the latest annual survey from the Federal Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration shows yet again that the spread of marijuana legalization for adults to more states is not dri driving an increase in youth use. So teen cannabis consumption has actually dropped since uh, in 2020. It's dropped since 2011 overall. So once again, this shows that decriminalization and legalization leads to more responsible use, more balance, and it does not lead to increased use among teens. The Senate Finance Committee Chairman Ron Wyden, a Democrat from Oregon, said marijuana legalization will be front and center after major pending legislation is handled. This actually doesn't make me that hopeful that it will be handled anytime soon because there's always major pending legislation. And with an election for a lot of people coming up in 2020 next fall, I think they're going to table the marijuana issue, keep pushing it, acting like they were trying to get it done and use it as a major part of their platform in that election instead of actually getting it done before then. Um, Representative Angie Craig, a Democrat from Mar uh, Minnesota, has tweeted, using medical marijuana to treat a medical condition shouldn't rob law-abiding Americans of their constitutional rights. We need to pass and get the more acts signed into law. So what she's referring to here mainly is Second Amendment rights, when she means constitutional rights, and that is uh, travesty. People who are using medical marijuana should not lose their Second Amendment rights. That doesn't make any sense. In state news, a new poll has found that 60% of Pennsylvania voters support legalizing marijuana, which is a record high. Support which comes as several new bipartisan cannabis legalization efforts are filed in their legislatures nearly tripled. It was only 22% in Pennsylvania in 2006. So 15 years later, it's 60%. And it does look like this issue is going to pass soon. It will be legalized in Pennsylvania. In Mississippi, their Agricultural and Commerce Commissioner reiterated his concerns about medical cannabis. Um, he shouldn't be too concerned because they're doing everything they can to not pass this, even though it was voted by the people of Mississippi. It looks like it's going to not even be addressed until well into next spring. One of the main reasons is that the Agricultural Commissioner would be in charge of the program and he doesn't want anything to do with it, so they should probably just replace him, but I doubt that's going to happen, but I'll keep you posted on that. In Washington, D.C., the City Council will consider legislation to crack down on unlicensed marijuana businesses this Tuesday. This seems completely unfair to me because Washington, D.C. legalized recreational marijuana six years ago. Since then, they have no licensing process. They, because it was on federal territory, it wasn't allowed. So people have been kind of in a gray area having marijuana businesses that technically aren't licensed but are legal. And now they're saying, well, we've passed it so they can be licensed. So if you're an unlicensed business, we're going to shut you down. However, or they're considering shutting them down. However, there's no process to get a license. If you are an unlicensed business, you can't just go apply, get stamped, and get a license. They haven't even set the rules. It's going to be months. So they're just going to put these people out of business in the interim and pave the way for big corporations to come in and monopolize the market. I think they should do some sort of expedited process for existing business owners to get a legal license in Washington, D.C., who've already been carrying the market in the interim. And a federal judge ruled that Maine's residency requirements for medical cannabis business owners can remain in effect while they are challenged in court. I guess that makes sense because there are rules right now that have to be overturned to change. So for now, you have to be a resident of, of Maine to have a dispensary there or a grow up. Um, but that probably will change when the ruling comes down. Michigan's revised hemp plan has received federal approval, so that's good. That's an industrial hemp plan, so they can get that production up and running for that sort of hemp production. And Washington state regulators have announced cannabis social equity rulemaking. The reason I brought this up is because after looking into it, um, they're not really doing anything. Social equity, you know, depending what you're using it for, can be a pretty dangerous thing and not really be what it sounds like it's going to be. It'd be pretty discriminatory. But in this case, when it comes to opening up the cannabis business to make it easier for more people to start small businesses, I'm for it. However, in Washington, in a lot of places, they just go round and round. This is just opening up rulemaking to public comment. And actually, this is a meeting about how to go about rulemaking. It's been years. So this is the main problem with things like this is they, it's just like committee after committee and meeting after meeting and money down the hole and nothing ever gets done. Um, so I'll keep you posted on that, but I don't seem like anything there is going to happen anytime soon. Moving on to international news, Italian activists have turned in over 630,000 signatures, which qualifies a referendum to legalize personal cultivation of marijuana and psilocybic mushrooms. The measure and petitions will undergo review by two courts before being put to voters next year. So I've been following this story for a little while here, and what happened was in Italy, they had an initiative going, but local officials, city owners, governors, things like that, weren't allowing signatures to be gathered in their area. The people protested, they got a month extension on getting the signatures, and in that month they were able to get the signatures they need to put this on the ballot. So based on public polling, it looks like Italy will have legal marijuana and probably legal mushrooms as well 
uh, once this is passed. So that's great news. And some opposite news here, in Australia, their federal police commissioner claimed that decriminalizing drugs would make Australia the, the Australian territory a target for organized crime. So this is just one more idiot who has his logic completely backwards. He even claimed that because 100 years of prohibition hasn't done anything, the drug problem is insurmountable. He clearly doesn't understand that organized crime thrives on the black market. By keeping it illegal, you're keeping Australia a target for organized crime. And as Southeast Asia decriminalizes marijuana, you'll make Australia more of a target for organized crime. The path to less organized crime is less black market, which means legalization, decriminalization. Um, you see this around the world. There's a few holdouts here and there that are still locked onto this idea that by opening things up to make them legal, use and crime and things are going to explode. Uh, they don't seem to understand at all that they've got it completely backwards, even though there's evidence from around the world that demonstrates this very clearly, such as my first story about teen use going down with legalization. So I don't really have a lot of hope for Australia to pull its head out anytime soon. But I do like to highlight the news like this where you still see places where people do not seem to understand how crime and black markets and drug prohibition really works. Moving on to science and health news, a study of patients with endometriosis has found that cannabis appears to be effective for pelvic pain, gastrointestinal issues, and mood elevation. So that is great news. That is a condition that can be difficult to treat with Western medicine, especially um, if you're just mitigating the symptoms. So cannabis for that. Um, looks like the study supports that pretty clearly. And a study of Florida medical cannabis patients most commonly use it to treat their symptoms of anxiety, pain, and stress, and most reported great therapeutic effectiveness and that a majority of 65 patients also reported a total reduction or discontinuation of at least one prescription over-the-counter drug, which is great news. And then the study does relate to medical cannabis. The other cannabinoids definitely help with this as well. We have a lot of customers who report reduction of pain, anxiety, and things like that, and they can discontinue some of their pharmaceuticals, which are more har harmful to their body and have worse side effects. All right, so that is the news for today. Thank you for joining me. Uh, please go to utoya.com. We've got some awesome new products out there. We've got some really cool new specials. We talk all about them on our live stream. If you missed it, it was 8 p.m. last night. Um, you can find it on our Utoya Organics channel, the channel you're watching right now. If you're watching this on Facebook, please like us. If you're watching on YouTube and you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe to the channel. And if you're a wholesaler, store owner, or distributor, please go to wholesale.utoya.com. It's super easy to register. All right, have a great weekend. Thanks for joining me.